Free and fair elections are the foundation of our system of government and one of the most important principles in our democracy. That was Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel. Moments after announcing the battleground state is leading the charge in charging fake electors and protecting election integrity. Nessel says the nefarious plot to overturn President Biden's win unfolded on December 14, 2020. The group allegedly met in the basement of Michigan GOP headquarters, signing multiple certificates claiming that they were the state's, quote, duly elected and qualified electors but their plot never materialized. Now, each of these defendants faces eight felony counts, including forgery. Now, you might recall, Michigan wasn't the only state that had a slate of fake electors attempting to do Trump's bidding, but it is the first to press charges. So now that Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin have Michigan as a blueprint, who will be next in line to stand up for democracy? Joining me now live is Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. Secretary, it's always so nice to have you on the show. Look, some of the people involved in this scheme were high-level members of your state's GOP, including the former co-chair of the Michigan Republican Party, as well as a township clerk. How significant is it that this step is being made by Attorney General Nessel toward accountability for these individuals? Well, thanks for having me, Katie. And it's such an important step forward in the effort to seek justice for those who took action to try to overturn the results of a legitimate presidential election simply because they didn't like the results. And remember, at the time when these individuals met in the basement of the state Republican Party headquarters to try to lie to the government about who was rightly deserving of Michigan's electoral college votes, there had been a number of legal cases and other challenges fully exhausted to demonstrate that there was no widespread fraud in our election results. The results indeed were an accurate reflection of the will of the people. So there, there is an abundance of evidence that these individuals knowingly tried to lie to the government about who won Michigan's electoral college votes. And those attempts cannot stand without consequences or else others will try to do it in the future. You know, for some of us, it could seem like this process of holding people accountable for trying to subvert our democracy and the will of people is a slow moving train. But I think you put it best on Twitter when you wrote, quote, never underestimate the women from Michigan. And I'm talking a female powerhouse team that includes you, Attorney General Dana Nessel, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, and State Senator Mallory McMorrow. Are you hoping, are you hoping, excuse me, Secretary, that other states will actually follow the lead that Michigan has set? Yes, and the lead not just in seeking accountability for past attempts to overturn an election, but the lead also in expanding our access to democracy in the state. Because at the same time that we saw these indictments come down this week, we saw several laws passed, one included, I believe, by Senator McMorrow and others, to expand access to the vote, to implement a ballot tracking system, to guarantee nine days of early voting in our state. So Michigan is leading the way, not just in seeking justice, but also expanding the right to vote in our state. And we do see ourselves as, I think, a uh, microcosm of the country, but also an example for what every state should be doing in moments like this. You had the chance to sit down and speak to special counsel Jack Smith's team in March of this year. You've said among the areas that the investigators seem to be focused on was the impact of the misinformation on election workers' lives and the threats that emerged from, from those various sources. You yourself have experienced threats of violence firsthand. How important is it for there to be action taken to make sure that the truth is reinforced time and time again as to what happened in 2020, not only in in criminal cases, but as well as civil cases, so as to protect the integrity of the process, but also to protect the safety of election workers and election officials. Yeah, it's critical because what we saw unfold in 2020, and to a certain extent attempted as well in different ways in 2022, was really an unprecedented effort to not just overturn election results that folks disagreed with, but really undermine the process itself. People showed up in Detroit and other places to try to interfere or block the counting of valid votes in 2020. One of those individuals now runs the Republican Party in our state. And at the same time, we saw threats and violence and harassment proliferate, not just against me and other secretaries of state, but against election officials in our state and elsewhere. And of course, all of that co collided uh, in Washington, D.C on January 6, 2021. So we have to seek justice and make a clear statement together as a state, as a country, as leaders, that this is not okay. 
This is not how democracy operates. We stand by the results of accurate elections. When we have evidence of wrongdoing, we bring it forward. But when that evidence is found to be lacking, we move forward together as a state and as a nation with a leader who is duly elected. So Attorney General Dana Nessel in your state initially investigated that fake elector scheme, but then referred it to the DOJ in January of 2022. After a period of time, however, there was some perceived inaction by the feds. So Dana Nessel actually reopened her investigation, which resulted in the arrests that were just announced, and the feds are back investigating. So do you, Secretary, think that there's actually going to be federal charges brought as well against these same 16 Republicans? Well, I don't know. I mean, we know the investigation is ongoing. We know, as uh, Barb McQuaid mentioned a little earlier, dual sovereignty exists so that if there are federal laws or if there is a federal conspiracy and there's evidence to suggest the law was violated at the federal level, then there should be indictments and we should expect them. But we should also recognize the importance of this process playing out in a way that is driven by evidence and facts and the law. And that does take time for good reason. We want to make sure that any precedents that's created or certainly any punishment or consequences that are levied are the result of a, a very a meticulous and thoughtful process that is not connected to politics, but solely connected to all of our responsibilities under the law. So it may take some time, but I do expect, whether it's in Michigan or other states, where both in, the investigations are ongoing in our state and elsewhere, or at the federal level, this is just the beginning of the, the effort to see consequences for this attempt. And uh, we should expect, I believe, more to come in the future. And to emphasize a point that you've made previously on my show and on others, election integrity, it isn't partisan. And it's certainly valuable each and every vote that is made, regardless of what your party affiliation is. So Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, I appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.